Why does it always come to this? One crappy little unit that doesn't get hit by my ballista. Okay. What's up guys, and welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. And for today's episode, I have a bunch more battle suggestions from the comments that you guys left on last video, and I will be getting to that. But first, I was really eager to get back into the campaign at a level called Still Nothing to See Here. Honestly, I didn't see them at first. It took me a minute, they're blending in really well. Except for Larry, who's just way too excited to die. Come to think of it, maybe he's just really excited to meet a woolly mammoth. Right? Like, it's not every day that you get to walk up to something like this and get stomped like a blue little tube of toothpaste. <laughs> Do you think he can take this down on his own? I would say Snuffy's got this, right? I'm not gonna bother sending any back up. Okay, there's a few more than I thought. It's hard to tell what's hey and what's uh, hey dude. <laughs> they don't stand a chance though, right? <laughs> <laughs> just getting tossed around. Okay, just Larry left. You don't like getting hit with sticks, okay? You're no Dumbo. I don't think Snuffy even hit him, right? I'm pretty sure he just died of excitement. Moving along to a level called Final Destination Bone Mage. And there is absolutely no way that I can put any unit on this narrow little bridge and not have its tank get pierced. I might be able to try my own Bone Mage. But even then, it's gonna be a toss up, right? It's gonna come down to who pierces who first. Or maybe they don't have a very easy time working with heights? Huh. Okay then. I didn't really expect that. So in reality, I would say any unit can win. <laughs> Especially if that helmet doesn't help them from falling to their death. Technically, that is a win, but it doesn't really feel like much of a victory. So I think we're gonna try again. I wanna use a spear thrower, right? If the spikes can't actually reach you, then you should be able to just chuck your spear right through his junk. I actually get a lot of comments on these videos saying, like, why are you so fixated on their junk? I'm not the one who's fixated, okay? Every ranged unit in this game is. <laughs> that is quite clearly a targeted assault on the bone jockstrap. Next up, we have a level called Thrice Power, and I'm not really sure why, to be honest. Like, there's only one kind of unit, not three. It might have to do with the fact that they're kind of in the shape of the Triforce, but like that's not gonna save them from an army of ice archers. <laughs> right, we could just line up over here and watch them march across that choke point, or try, I guess. Am I gonna get attacked from behind, or below? I'm really paranoid on this map with the door down there, but I think we're probably in the clear. I love the Ice Archer, honestly. It's probably one of my favorite units in the game right now, because it's just so different. Like, I know if something gets shot by a bunch of arrows regularly, it'll die, just like with the Ice Arrows, but seeing them freeze solid and then keel over is just such a great little addition. I'm at a level called All the Archers, where we have to face off against every type of archer. I literally just said that I love you guys. Like, you're my favorite units, I wanna use you all the time, and then you go and spit in my face and, and turn on me. Um, oh, uh, excuse me, pardon me. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> Hold on, am I missing something? No, you're missing something. Are you missing an eye? We've seen size discrepancies before, right? Where you get little guys like this one and regular sized and then some big ones every now and then, but I've never seen units missing something. Like that's probably not good for us, right? Normally an archer has to close one eye before they can accurately fire their bow. He just decided to optimize. So we absolutely have to use units with shields, otherwise we're gonna get mowed down before we get anywhere near them. And I also think the strategy is gonna be to line them up right along the border, because they need to close that distance as quickly as possible. These are not gonna be my fighters, okay? These are a distraction. They have full body shields, they, they're pretty cheap, right? So hopefully they can just absorb a lot of damage. My main killers are probably gonna be knights? I rarely get to use them because they're so freaking expensive, right? I get to afford three of them, but again, they have a pretty hefty shield, so hopefully they don't get shot in the back. And then they'll be led by hoplites. Also, shield bearers. 
yeah, hopefully this works. I mean, they're gonna get their shots off one way or another, guys. There's no two ways about it. But we just need to get in close and do some damage. There we go. Yeah, the shield bearers did their job. I mean, they eventually fell, but they still absorbed a lot of damage. And we wiped them. Moving on to a level called Death from Above. And I'm not sure whose death they're talking about. I don't think the developers have really clued in on the fact that Yunus don't do well with heights. <laughs> I'm gonna bet on half of these hoplites falling to their death. So how are we gonna kill the other half? I'm thinking probably minotaurs, right? We can just line them up back here. Maybe we can also go with our own little basic phalanx. Sarissas and shieldmen, kind of like that. Yeah, that'll work all right. Now, how many of you are gonna fall to your death? Probably at least a few, I would imagine. <laughs> I see some that are dead and some that are stuck in the geometry. Yeah, I don't think they anticipated that. Okay, come on, Minotaurs, what are you doing? Stop partying in the streets and get in there. There's like running the bulls, except you're gonna be the ones who win for once. <laughs> Holy crap. Wait, where are the snakes coming from? Who's shooting snakes? There are any snake archers around here? Weird. Okay, I guess they're just snakes hanging out in this city? I don't know, oh, come on. What did I say about getting stuck on the geometry? Can you maybe just, yeah, there we go. Okay, teamwork makes a dream work, get in there. Listen, it's really hard climbing upstairs when you have hooves, okay? Just cut them some slack. <laughs> come on, beefy boy, you can do it. Holy crap, it's Sarissa's a champion. He just took down two hoplites by himself. Dude, really? Come on, I, I know the other guy is stuck in a plant, so he's not much better, but my God, we're gonna be here a while. Ooh, come on, come on, you're so close, you can see him, there we go. They were exchanging choice words there for a minute, but uh, now he's got him. Oh, and the other one fell down, perfect. Just pick him up and choke him to death. <laughs> and we'll be in the clear. Oh, there's more of them, really? I assume we had killed everybody. My God, there's so many building humpers around here. I think this is the last one, but it's really hard to tell. Every now and then he walks over to a dead body, picks it up and it screams, and then it's really dead. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure. No, no, don't get poked in the belt. You gotta kill him. Don't, there you go. <laughs> Start swinging for the fences. <laughs> Come on, beefy, you can do it. <laughs> Are you dead? Oh, he died! You gotta be kidding me! Oh no, it's up to that one Sarissa. Oh, I think he broke this guy's arm though. So he doesn't have a shield, he's at a disadvantage. You can do it, you can do it, you can, yes! I have an all new respect for the Sarissa, I'm not gonna lie, it's really impressive that they have a weapon that's kind of like two body lengths long and they can take out units that cost twice as much as them. We're back in the final destination with the Chieftain, who kind of freaks me out, to be honest. I, I don't know why, but it's really unsettling that his helmet and his shoulder pads and he blink all at the same time. It it's just off-putting. <laughs> what do I want to use against you? I could try the Sarissa. I just said that I have a lot of respect for them, but at the same time, I also kind of want to try a ranged unit. We very rarely get to use a ranged unit in 1v1s. Like, what if I tossed a... Uh, Couple of ice archers up here. Would that work, I wonder? You guys, sh okay. That's actually working really, really well. Oh, that's kind of cheap, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but again, really focusing in that groinal region. Next up, we have a level called tree mammoths, which are surprisingly really, really loud. I think I saw a lot of comments from you guys saying that you wanted to see archers versus mammoths because I really don't know how much you can pin cushion a mammoth and since I have a great big budget this time, we're just gonna buy all the archers and make it rain. I get the feeling, oh yeah, those do not look like easy falls. <laughs> Some of them are even stuck in the trees and stuck on stuff. I don't think they thought this through. Right, like, uh, an elephant never forgets, but they also probably don't think too much. <laughs> there we go, okay, that one's down. The rest never even got to move towards us. They got like a, a tusk stuck around a trunk, or their belly stuck on a rock. They just never bothered to leave the tree. <laughs> like, 
I, again, I know I say it quite often, but I didn't expect to wake up this morning and shoot a mammoth out of a tree. I guess mammoth harvesting season came early this year, because somebody managed to pluck these ripe mammoths from their trees and toss them down in the middle of the road in a level called Traffic Jam, where once again we have our tusked friends blocking a bunch of wheelbarrows. Okay, that's a little tricky actually, because I really do like the ballista versus the mammoth, just seeing them get shot square in the forehead and drop. It's so satisfying, but at the same time, I get the feeling those wheelbarrows are going to manage to squeak through and run me over. So we're going to need something to delay them. Uh, How about we just go with the clubber? You know what, it's been a long time since I've used a lot of clubbers. Something like this, get a few in the back, because I really don't want it to come down to clubber versus mammoth, but if it does, then so be it. Now. Fire Ballista! Come on, you can't possibly miss. Oh, oh, there we go. That's the stuff. One mammoth down. <laughs> Easy peasy. If you guys want to take out... Oh, right. Oh, crap. Oh, yeah, you see, though, they can take out the little units real easy, but the problem is I forgot that the wheelbarrows break apart into half a dozen little guys, which is kind of... Oh, God. <laughs> kind of problematic, right? Okay, well, the other alley's looking fine. Maybe you guys can hold them off long enough for them to just keep firing, right? Get them. Oh, yeah, that, that got them all right. No, 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 no. Don't let them dance around. That's right. Aim. Fire. Yes. Okay, just two left. Where did all the clubbers go? Oh, no. No. It's inevitable. There's no way you're going to be able to kill this guy, right? Uh, oh. No, no, you didn't you didn't hit him. I was optimistic there that maybe like the arm swinging knocked him out. The ballistas do a great job, but all these clubbers died instantly. That's the problem. We definitely need something a little bit more useful. What if we toss around a couple spear throwers? Maybe we can make this a bit of a primitive invasion. I just need to make it so that once the ballistas have done their job and all these stupid little wheelbarrows have kind of fallen apart, we can clean up the mess afterwards. But I don't think the mammoths are gonna close the distance anytime soon, right? The ballistas should be able to take out- Oh my god, the wheelbarrows are pushing the mammoths forward faster. That's why it's called traffic jam. That's really clever and uh, probably, probably dangerous. <laughs> okay, mammoths down. And now you guys can actually throw over this little traffic jam we have going here. I think this is actually gonna work. Uh, maybe, kind of, they're throwing tomatoes back at us. That's kind of rude. Why does it always come to this? One crappy little unit that doesn't get hit by my ballista. Okay, I think he got hit by, he got hit by the ballista so hard he evaporated. <laughs> okay, maybe you can prove me wrong, right? Eventually this guy's gonna turn the corner and when he does, you just feed it to him. This is honestly unbearable. For some reason, nobody wants to make a move. There's three units left and they're all friggin' stuck. And there's also something going on down here, but I'm not totally sure what. Oh, you guys are still alive. Their cart tipped over and they just don't know how to get back up, I guess? Oh, come on. Okay, we'll do it again. This time around, I have the ballistas set up in the alleyway so they can't get stuck behind the stupid wall. Hopefully, they're either gonna kill something or die. Honestly, I don't really care which. <laughs> Just do anything so that I can move forward with my life. Preferably, there we go, preferably kill. That one went right through them. This seems like a pretty good trade-off, guys. Okay, they're throwing tomatoes and you're throwing spears. <laughs> so how about we just go back and forth and see who comes out ahead? Right, does that sound good? Oh, 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 we're hitting, yeah, we're hitting guys. He's fallen and he can't get up. Somebody wanna give him his life alert? There we go, thank you. Oh, there we go, finally. <laughs> That's what I wanted to happen, okay? As long as they don't get stuck, my strategy is flawless. Next up, we have a level called Big Confusion. And I'm guessing it's called that because we're pretty much just facing off against potion sellers. Right, there are a bunch of shield bearers there so that I can't just mow them down with archers, but yeah, potion sellers. So what do we want to send in against them? I'm thinking maybe a couple of very confused minotaurs, <laughs> and then a bunch of Sarissa in the back. 
because I do have a lot of respect for the Sarissa and I want to see them succeed. But it's mainly the Minotaur that I want to see do work or get confused. Both works for me. I'm still not even 100% sure what confusion does in this game. Right? I've never seen my own units fight one another. And it doesn't seem to do damage over time or anything like that. They're confusing their own units. <laughs> Most of the potion sellers and shield bearers are confused. Yeah, you see? That, that looks really confused. That's not how to hold a shield. <laughs> Interesting. I'm also going to need to get around to doing more with the potion sellers. That guy wasn't even confused. He just walked off the edge of the planet. Strange. Okay, well, either way, confused beef is still angry beef. This seems like a really good segue into some of your suggestions, like 20 potion sellers versus one mammoth. I don't actually know how anything acts under Potion Cellar is nonetheless the biggest, dumbest creature in the game, so this is something that I really couldn't resist. I don't think it's necessarily gonna get drunk, but it does get green and probably very confused. Is it like the Ice Archer? Is it getting progressively greener until it just keels over and dies? Like maybe there's a toxicity limit? I have no idea. I might not have enough Potion Cellars, or the Potion Cellar might not really do anything. It kind of looks like the mammoth is attacking nothing. Right? Maybe that's it? It just swings wildly and attacks units that aren't really there? Because that'd be pretty cool. It is getting pelted and they do kill. Interesting. Can Zeus shock himself? This is something that I've definitely seen before and I'm pretty sure I have it in my old videos somewhere where for some reason a lightning bolt does come back at Zeus. Like there isn't a Zeus on the other team, it's his own bolt, and it does even hit him sometimes. But I don't think it's because of the formation of the units. It does seem really random, but I figured we would try. You know, maybe it can chain through all of these test dummy halflings and then hit him. I have no idea. There's really only one way of finding out. <laughs> Come on, Zeus. Can you do that for us? That'd be so sweet. Oh, oh. Okay. So it can go around in a loop but it just kind of goes back to where it began rather than to him. Maybe I need a slightly bigger loop. Yeah, that might make a difference. I doubt it, but it'd be really interesting to see. You go ahead and throw your bolt and hopefully it won't peel off this time. Oh, yeah, you see it cuts straight back across to the people that didn't die the first time around. So it won't go back to him. What if I put him right between the two points where the lightning bolt finally jumps? I think this is our best chance. I still don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but it seems plausible. So long as it changed the whole way around, he might be able to bolt himself in the ass. Oh no. <laughs> He's smarter than that, guys. Okay, I don't think that it's easily replicated, but I still think it's possible. Bard versus Bard. Okay. The battle is actually simulating right now. In my mind, I thought maybe they'll drop the instruments and just start slugging it out, or maybe they'll have some kind of wicked banjo off, but instead they just turn their backs to one another and are completely ignoring the existence of an opposing army. I really don't think anything else is gonna come of this. Let's test out some holy snakes with snake archers and priests. This is another one of those ingenious questions that I just don't have the answer to, because I've talked about in the past how it seems like the snakes are individual units. Right? When a snake archer fires a snake, it fights an opposing unit, and it almost like doubles your army in a way. But would the priest then heal that snake and treat it like an actual unit? I have no idea, but we're gonna try to find out. Hopefully the priests don't just circle jerk one another. They do heal the snakes! You can make holy super snakes! <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, these guys never stood a chance. <laughs> so many of them. Play chess. So one king, one Zeus, two knights, two squires, two Spartans, and eight halflings. Again, that's such a great idea, I absolutely love it. So we have a chessboard set up with the halflings as pawns, which is just too perfect. Uh, technically, one of the knights seems to be a bit of a Jedi. I don't have any power over that, so sorry if that's cheating. I, I don't really have a team that I'm rooting for anyway. I just kind of want to see what's going to happen. 
I would imagine that Zeus is just gonna kinda demolish everybody. Zeus is the queen, believe it or not. King is the king, Zeus is the queen. Makes sense. Zeus is probably one of the strongest units in the game. Queen is one of the strongest pieces in chess. Um, blue team seems to have really gotten an advantage with that Jedi. Go figure. How about a very simple suggestion in Holy Catapults? My first instinct to read that as Holy Catapult, Batman. But honestly, I have no idea if Holy Catapults are a thing. I would imagine priests can heal anything, but we found out last episode that the priests also trigger random abilities in the unit. Like they automatically make the Minotaur charge. I don't know if they would automatically make the catapult fire faster. So I've decided to line up a whole bunch of bards since they can't hurt my units other than with sound. I, it took a while, but I got them all playing in kind of unison, kind of. <laughs> that unison won't last for long, okay? The holy catapults are well on their way. Oh, that's interesting. So we have one holy catapult and two regular catapults, and we can see if there's any kind of difference between their fire rate or damage or anything like that. It seems pretty much the same. It might just be that it's regenerating health. It might not be doing anything other than that. It's also hard to tell if it's doing any more damage or not because, <laughs> oh. What the hell? The one that was being healed by the priests killed itself. It, it didn't get hit by any bards. There's no way they could do damage. So what happened there? That's really, really weird. Is this one gonna fall apart too? Maybe it just doesn't know how to handle that much power? I don't know. This just raised more questions than answers. The priests are such a mystery in this game. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Bardland, you know what? I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And eventually, I will get back to the point where I'm facing off against your armies. Like, I know that's what I used to do. People would leave an army, I would try to beat it. It was a bit of a challenge, that kind of thing. And I will do that again. But right now, because the game is new and we know so little about it, I'm really enjoying that kind of Mythbusters approach that I've been taking. It just keeps things interesting. So if you guys want to see more, as always, be sure to leave a like on the video, leave a comment with more suggestions, and I'll try to simulate them next time. And thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.